Here we're going to look at a quick solution to a problem from the Putnam exam. So this is from the 2008 edition and it is question A1. So let's see what our goal is. Let's let f be a function from r to, so in other words from the plane to r, such that it satisfies the following functional equation. So f of xy plus f of yz plus f of zx equals zero. So we've got some sort of cyclic action here that whenever you cycle x to y, y to z, and z back to x, and plug them into the function and add it all up, you get zero. And this has got to be true for all real numbers x, y, and z. Then from that, our goal is to show that f of x, y, this function of two variables, is in fact the difference of a function of one variable evaluated at x and y. So in other words, it looks like g of x minus g of y for some g, which is a function from r to r, in other words, a function of one variable. All right, so there's really only one hint here. Well, it's actually kind of a multi-part hint, but I'll let you guys look at this hint for a little bit before we look at a solution. And our goal or our hint should be to check all special choices for X, Y, and Z. So maybe some or all of them are zero. So maybe like X equals zero, Y and Z are free, X and Y is zero, Z is free, so on and so forth. Or maybe you could look at the case when X, Y, and Z are all the same. Maybe that's also interesting. Okay, so maybe give this problem a go with this hint and then we'll come back with a solution. Okay, so hopefully that hint was helpful. Now we're ready to look at a full solution. So the first thing that I wanna do is consider the case when all of these inputs are the same. So in other words, consider X equals Y equals Z, but they're all free to be anything, but they have to be the same thing. So notice in that setup, we're going to get three F of X comma X equals zero. In other words, we get F of X comma X equals zero, and that's gotta be true for all X in real numbers. We'll notice that if we have this kind of setup in this green box, then this is definitely satisfied because we have G of X minus G of X. And so that gives us a good hint that maybe this is something good to look at along the way. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna look at is, let's consider X and Z to be the same thing. So X equals Z, which is still free to be anything, but they have to be the same thing. And then finally, Y is free to be independent of X and Z. So let's notice what we get. So we're gonna get F of X comma Y, so that's the first bit. Then we're gonna get plus F of Y comma X. That's the second bit, again, because Z is equal to X in this case. And then finally, plus F of X comma X, again, because Z is equal to X. But no, from this, notice from this first thing that we calculated, we see that f of x comma x is equal to zero. So that means we can get rid of that part right there. And we've got this nice anti-symmetry built into this function. So in fact, notice that we have f of y comma x equals negative f of x comma y. So now we've got all of the parts available to us to finish it off. So let's go ahead and take this functional equation and what I wanna do is solve it for f of x, y. So let's say, just notice that our functional equation will give us f of x, y equals, so that's gonna be negative f of y comma z minus f of z comma x. Great. But now notice by this anti-symmetry, which we calculated in the last step, we see that we can exchange here the Z and the X if we add a plus there. Good. But now notice that that tells us that F of X, Y equals F of X comma Z minus F of Y comma Z. But this is true for all X, Y, and Z. But notice what that tells us. Over here on the left-hand side of the equation, we only have a function of x and y, which means on the right-hand side of the equation, we also only have a function of x and y. So that means that we can set z equal to really anything we want on the right-hand side of the equation, and we've like killed the dependence of this right hand of the equation on z. So now you can really choose anything. So maybe we'll choose z equals one because it's like kind of nice. And notice that that gives us f of x, y 
equals f of x comma one minus f of y comma one. But we can just say that that's equal to g of x minus g of y, where g of x equals f of x comma one. So we found our function that we can use to break f of x, y into a difference of that function evaluated at x and that function evaluated at y. And that's a good place to stop.